You know, people always talk about video games as though they're bad for you. Like, oh, you're not getting off the couch and getting exercise. Well, you know what they're a lot safer than is snowboarding. And here we've got a snowboarding video game, SSX, and you're probably not going to get a massive head injury by playing this game, unless you're, like, really, really into it. You may sprain a thumb. SSX for the Xbox 360 here. TJ, what's it all about? Is it worth playing? Would you rather play this than snowboard for real? Well, I'd certainly be a whole lot warmer if I were just playing SSX. This is actually the reboot of a franchise that got its start as one of the earliest PlayStation 2 games back in 2000. But this one says, Defy reality. Own. The planet. That would take a whole lot of money, actually. Can you own the planet in this game? Well, you can own opposing snowboarders all over the planet. And I think that's a little bit more toward what they were going for. But can you pwn other snowboarders? Yes. By misspelling own at them? Yes. You can absolutely do that. From Everest to Kilimanjaro. Is there still snow there, though? There is if they need it to be. I guess it's a game they can do Granted, this is the series that decided they were going to make a three-story high circular snowboarding track in the middle of Tokyo. Well, why not? This strangeness that you're looking at right now is actually symbolic of the series dialing it back a little bit from the absolute madness of SSX Tricky. Well, how's the gameplay? And will fans of the earlier installments enjoy it? And if you've never played an earlier SSX game, should you play this one? In my opinion, the original SSX series was as good as arcade-style snowboarding gets. However, as the series moved on into SSX 3, and SSX on Tour, and then SSX Blur, which nobody really liked, things got a little bit more realistic and a little bit more realistic, until eventually some of that strangeness was gone. On the one hand, the series reboot gets a little bit wackier. You've got much bigger drops, much higher falls, all sorts of new mechanics like deploying a wingsuit in midair or snowboarding through a lava tube in the middle of Africa in pitch darkness except for your headlamp, which means you don't want to do that many spins or you're going to end up running directly into a wall or into some lava and that's always a bad sign. Just because I've never done this before, I felt like it was time. Mark has a new hat. A rubber band on there. Where Stylish, man. Stylish. Hey, style's gotta start somewhere. Why not here? Because you end up with things like that. <laughs> For this new version, they decided to go with a new control scheme that diverged from what we came to recognize in the PlayStation 2 and GameCube and original Xbox versions, but still maintained that classic control scheme as an option. I like hearing about sports games that use traditional controller controls instead of requiring me to uh, stand up on some kind of a stupid plastic skateboard or flail my arms around in front of the uh, connector move and actually pretend like I'm playing the sport. I like to push buttons. Like, I, I'm a big fan of the old school Tony Hawk's series of skateboarding games. Yeah, that's exactly why SSX Blur, the one that was a Wii exclusive, was pretty much outright panned. In a game like this with hardcore, fast-paced, arcade snowboard action, you just don't have time or allowance for waggle controls or all the stuff they wanted you to do with the Wiimote it's never going to be accurate enough for the gameplay experience. So if you enjoyed the old school Tony Hawk games on PlayStation or Dreamcast and you haven't played anything in a while, SSX for the 360 is a good place to start. Absolutely. This one on the uh, PS3 as well? It is. Okay, is it on the, um, I was gonna ask about the Wii, but I guess it just kinda shot that one down, didn't you? Bang. If you pronounce that, it's Six. Which is half of success.